crispy beer battered fry fluke with a little jalapeno aioli. I'm using fluke. I have about a pound and a half here. Most white fishes like this are very mild. I'm just gonna cut them in half because I want them to be relatively large, not like, you know, fish nuggets, so to speak. Um, but speaking of nuggets, you could use the batter that I'm gonna show you how to make and you could fry chicken with it too. Perfect, chicken nuggets is a staple in my household. <laughs> Could you use another type of fish for this? Absolutely, but I would stick to flakier style fish. Like, I, I wouldn't do this with swordfish, but fluke, halibut, cod. I'll set this over here, give my hands a wash, and we'll start working on our batter. So I have three cups of instant flour. It's a very finely milled flour, perfect for tempuras or fish batters or anything that you want crunchy. Could you use a different kind? You could. The best flour to use probably would be rice flour, also a great frying flour. Um, the thing with rice flour is you're not gonna get that golden brown. Or you could use equal parts all-purpose flour, and then the other half use cornstarch, hmm. and you're still gonna get a very crunchy batter. I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons of baking powder. To that, I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of baking soda a tablespoon of cornstarch, amping up the crunchiness. That's what the cornstarch brings to the party. And then <clears throat> any kind of favorite rub or seasoning, I'm just using a seafood rub. We mix this all together, just so it's nice and even. Now the wet part of the batter is really easy. It's eggs and beer. You're cooking with beer weight, what is that? <laughs> so what? beer brings the fizz, beer lightens it up. If you don't want beer or you're making this for your kids and you want to eliminate the beer maybe from that, although the alcohol cooks out as it fries, you could use ginger ale, you could use soda water, you could use seltzer, and also beer and sodas have a little bit of natural, you know, some natural, some not natural sugars in them. Um, and so that's gonna give you a little bit of goldenness. Now, this calls for about 20 ounces of beer which works out great for me, because that's one full beer and about three quarters of another beer. And you need to reserve four ounces of beer, <laughs> which is your treat for cooking for everyone. We whisk this together. See the fizz, Liv? Yep. From the beer. So that fizz is gonna help our batter remain very light so we get this really crunchy batter on our fish. So the wet goes into the dry. I just get it going with a little bit, and then I add the remainder, and then it's just a little bit easier to whisk through. Oh, and I see all the little fizzy bubbles. Yeah, and we're just making sure that our batter is nice and smooth now. So the batter's ready, the fish is cut. Next we could start frying our fish. So one of the important things before we fry the fish though, is we want to make sure that they're dry. We want that batter to adhere because I'm not going flour, batter, this is just straighten the batter out. So I'm just gonna take some paper towels and I'm gonna dab the top of the fish just to ensure that they're nice and dry. And if I was doing this with chicken, would I do the same thing? Yeah, you always want the protein to be dry. And then we're gonna season them with some kosher salt, a little bit of cracked black pepper, and we do the same exact thing on the other side. And then we are in a good place to start frying. So now we wanna check our oil. We should be at about 360 degrees. If it's a little hot, I always keep oil on the side so I could cool the oil down. We're at 370, which actually isn't bad because as I add the fish, the temperature of the oil is gonna come down a little bit. If you don't have a thermometer, what you could do is you could just take a little tail piece of the fish and cut it off and do a tester to see where you are. So you could see, see how the, the oil's alive, it's moving. That oil's ready to go. So now I'm gonna just start battering all of my seafood. And if you're doing this inside on the stove top, what is it set to? Um, well, it's more about the temperature of the oil. So okay. whatever temperature you need to set your stove top to to get it to that 360-ish is what you're looking for. So we go in with the batter. We just batter the fish and you can see it's just coating it really nice. And what I like to do is I like to put a couple pieces in there 
and get them coated. I grab a fork, I move over to my oil, and I'm just gonna pull out a piece of fish, let some of that excess batter drip away, and then gently lay it in my oil. Don't be worried about the heat of the oil and drop it from above to try to be safer. It's actually more dangerous that way because it's gonna splash. So you just gently put it in and remove it with the fork. And this is a good way to do it because you let the batter run off and you go right in and you could see, see how the batter's puffing up? Mm -hmm. The reason it's puffing like that is because of we put in the beer and because we have the baking soda and the baking powder, which gives us this beautiful lift on our batter. It's getting golden brown. As it's getting golden brown, that fish is cooking all the way through. So we're gonna let those continue to fry. You can see these are beautiful. They're golden brown. That oil is still moving and happy, which means that we maintained our 360 degrees. So I'm just gonna pull these off, let that oil kinda drip away, go away. Fry those right up. Yeah, I'm just gonna put them in a little bit of flour and salt and pepper and crisp them up a little bit. And so it's just a fun little garnish, flavorful lemon. garnish. I love a fried lemon too. I was thinking, Lizzie, like a little tartar sauce aioli situation oh, for yes. our fish. And I have some pickled jalapenos. So I'm gonna throw those in your aioli. And then I have a garlic clove here peeled for you. I'm gonna season the flour for our garnish. I'm just gonna do flour, salt, and pepper. And then I'm gonna put my lemons and uh, parsley in here and just give them a quick little toss. When you put stuff like this in, you gotta be a little bit cautious. Ooh, hello. Oh, the it's, mustard's it's, winning. So in this aioli, we have pickled jalapeno, just some store-bought mayo, cracked black pepper, zest and juice of a lime, and grated garlic. Shake off any excess flour and you throw it in. As soon as the liquid comes out of the lemons and the parsley is when they're gonna start to get crunchy, and that's when the popping starts happening. All right, so the last of the lemon and parsley is coming out. Wait, that looks Look how crunchy delicious. it is. Yay! <laughs> it's just a fun garnish because lemon and herbs are so good with fish, you know? Yes. Oh, it looks good. Right? I mean. So I'm just gonna start putting oh. some of our... God, the fish plate crunch. was Click. such a good call. I know. <laughs> so cute. So cute. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put my little aioli in a bowl for that. Oh, I love it. And then we just garnish. And we'll get little Liv a plate. I'm gonna and take go a into. big piece of fish. This is just a beautiful. I'm gonna start crunch. with the potatoes. I'm, I'm so excited right about with the, the fish. Mm. Oh my god. I'm so good. This fish is so good. It really is.